continued from uh, how democracy and communism have become the opposite of what they were intended to be by Martinus, 1947. Likewise, it has been shown that labor union movements, employer associations, strikes and lockouts have not succeeded in creating peace within the societies that salary and price increases have assumed a vicious spiral that in no way at all do these things guarantee the safety of their originators. Everything within democratic states is anything but democracy, just as everything within communist states is anything but real communism. Do not these communist countries adopt the very same class distinctions as we see in the democratic states? Do not the same upper class and underclass occur? The same aristocracy and proletariat? Comparable to the class distinctions that existed under absolute monarchs? Democracy and communism are no longer the sublime ideals they were intended to be at their inception. Therefore, as before mentioned, the ruling political structures of today have eventually shifted from an idealistic beginning and ended up in a rush towards the abyss, a slide down the slippery slope of war and mutilation a plunge into total shutdown of true cultural manifestation and creation, a rush towards doomsday that has already sunk the most effective dis dictatorship states into ruin and granted their most persistent dictators a humiliating death or execution by the murder or suicide of themselves and their murderous helpers on the scaffold of war crimes. How dictatorship surmounts both religion and materialistic science. However, now we are supposed to believe that the same destiny will not befall other totalitarian systems and their adherents if they do not change their attitude towards true democracy and true communism. But apart from this, one cannot deny that there is speedy growth in the development of this dictatorship's suffocating octopus arms with their suction disc embrace or of all states and individuals even if one really does not want to accept this truth because those sucking discs portray themselves as innocent inevitably emergency measures such as foreign currency reserves shortages of goods price increases, wage conflicts, strikes, logouts, and unemployment. Those deadly sucking discs, in turn, force governments, no matter, no matter whether they call themselves democratic or communist, to take dictatorial steps in regard to access to housing, heat, electrical light, and clothing to transport, exit permits, the sale and pur purchase of goods. Furthermore, this induces an enormous consumption of state money to pay for a dictatorial summoning of military power in the shape of a dominant army and navy along with a costly air force. Sighing and moaning under this dictatorial yoke, the public has been made to imagine this as true democracy or true communism, which gives rise 
to a heightened blazing up of nationalism or worship of, of one's own state at the expense of showing consideration for other states. And with a weakened trust in or delusional attitude concerning true democracy, the road is more or less wide open for the absolute advance of dictatorship. The rights of free speech, thought and spirit become subject to censorship, and the last remnants of personal freedom begin to shut down. Dictatorship becomes absolute, and all of these developments in dictatorship are no less flourishing within Christian states and are practiced to a high degree by people baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is quite true that this process of development hasn't been wished for, nor is it desired by the people unless they have simply been inflamed by propaganda in favor of, of dictatorship and are thus induced to believe in it. This is something that takes place in spite of man's past endeavors to make democracy or communism work. It is something that neither religious nor political forces have been able to find a remedy for, much less material science. No national government can offer any remedy for this wretched state of affairs. The government of a single country can easily prove its innocence and helplessness in the advancing development of dictatorship. It cannot do anything to change the situation when other states do not want to open up their surplus supplies of fuel, oil, cereals and other vital products without fu fulfilling specific harsh and impossible conditions. Such a government has no choice but to dictate that its citizens limit their consumption of vital supplies to the restricted quantities it got access to through its own scanty currency and self-sufficiency. It is obvious that this limitation can only be obtained through dictatorship, ration cards, control of goods and so on. It is obvious that this situation creates a huge impact on the population's personal liberties and rights of ownership in the form of restrictions that are in total opposition to democratic politics and laws providing protections to the citizen, which have been the rule up to this moment. It was during this period of or epoch that colossal scientific, technical and chemical progress was made, which has, has to stagnate